Welcome. So today we're going to go over our IV start. So uh, generally, paramedic school, this is uh, one of the stations that you kind of test out of to determine a competency level. So the first thing when we go through this station is making sure that you have all of the equipment that you need to be successful. So generally, you're using the training arm. So you can see these have you know, big ropes. Uh, they're generally easier to come in. They allow for flash and they allow for the instructor to be able to see whether or not you've been successful with your veiny puncture with that blood return. Um, so usually uh, you have to come in at a little bit higher angle on these arms uh, as opposed to an actual human uh, because of the depth and the thickness of these uh, ropes that kind of play the role of veins. So uh, a lot of times, you know, this is where when we look anatomically at people, you've got to take into consideration age, underlying health condition of the vasculature. Do they have diameters that are impacted by plaque formation? Atherosclerosis, what size catheter are we using? So the smaller the catheter, the greater the resistance. Um, you know, are we going more distal? So the smaller the internal diameter of the veins. Remember that veins are a low pressure system. So as we come in and we start to do this, um, you want to make sure that you're always introducing yourself, right? Getting consent for these things. So uh, the station usually runs that you're told that you've done an assessment and you need to make a determination that uh, you want to start an IV and administer fluids to a patient who's dehydrated. So remember, we don't just use fluid resuscitation for hypovolemia. So uh, in school, we get used to kind of a blood pressure of 90 or greater. Well, then they're stable. They're hemodynamically stable. Well, in real life, those numbers don't mean anything. I can have somebody who has a blood pressure or systolic blood pressure of 130 and still be dehydrated and require fluid resuscitation. So that's where, you know, this becomes an important, an important you know, intervention uh, in conjunction of your assessment, right? So once you've done this, you've made a determination. Does this patient need IV access? And if they do, are we administering fluids? If we're giving medications, certainly cardiac medications, then we'd prefer to have fluids running than have them set to a lock because if there was a problem, you don't want to have to be backtracking and now trying to spike a bag and get that ready if this patient were to decompensate on you. So you always want to be two steps ahead of your patient. So whenever you do IVs, airway, things like that, any of these skills, uh, you want to get in the habit of creating what we call your EMS OCD, right? So this is where now you want to have your equipment out and you want to have everything that you need and you want it laid out the exact same way. So that way, every time you go to do this, everything is where you want it and you can kind of find it without having to look. So if we go over kind of quickly just the equipment you're going to need for the station, this is where if we're going to do fluid resuscitation, uh, we want to make sure that we have our liter or 500 bag of normal saline. So it's 0.9% sodium chloride. Uh, this is that uh, isotonic solution. So the sodium particles are the same, similar to that that we would find in you know, human blood. So we want to have our 10 drop set, our MAC drop. This is where now the MAC drip all right, it does not have the needle, the 60 drop set with the needle, our micro drip, uh, that would be more for our infusions, which we'll talk about in another video. Uh, these ones here, you've got the, the MAC drip, and this is where now, nice open, so if we needed to get fluid resuscitation, we're able to do so very quickly. Uh, we see at this end, so this is out of the packaging, normally these come in packaging, and we would take things out so they're sterile until we need them. So here we've got our cap, on our lure connect so that way it's not coming in contact with anything it's sterile until we take that cap off and the same thing on our flow chamber where we're going to spike our bag so this has a cap as well all right so we need our make sure that we have the correct extension set we want to make sure that we have the fluid resuscitation that we're going to use if you're going to use lactated ringers if you're looking at a smaller bag uh, this is where now we're looking at what do we have available to us you want some alcohol prep pads all right, so those are going to be available. You know, we're going to need those to cleanse and keep a septic technique. You want some two by twos so that if we needed to clean anything up, if we had any blood uh, that got in and around, we can keep this kind of sterile and clean for the patient, never touching the insertion site. Um, we may need to build up in order to tent to keep good flow after we get our vein puncture and, and attach our extension set. We might have to build that up a little bit to make sure that uh, there's no kinks on the line. Um, and we may need that if we uh, blew the line. So if we had infiltration, something like that, we would use our sterile gauze, put direct pressure, we'd immediately discontinue that line, and then keep direct pressure here. We'd start either more proximal or ideally in another extremity, okay? Uh, you're gonna have your venous constriction band. 
All right, so this is gonna go on the patient. We're gonna let them know before we put it on, let them know that it's gonna get a bit tight. And the purpose of this is to create that back pressure so that way now as we're palping for a good vein, uh, we're seeing them become a little bit more engorged, helping them raise a little more to the surface. Uh, you don't want to do things like come in and smack them, hit them, things like that. If you're having trouble finding a location for these IVs, uh, try some heat, right? So try a, a heat pack, um, you know, a little bit of kind of rubbing back and forth. Remember, uh, heat will cause vasodilation. That will cause, you know, these to come closer to the surface of the skin, make it a little bit easier for us to be able to kind of palpate and find them. So, uh, you know, it's just some things to kind of keep in mind when we're out in the field. If you need to use more than one venous constriction band in order to you know, get good pressure, we can do that as well. So when we need to get the line in order to give medication or fluid resuscitation, we always want to go to an IV first. Um, we do have IO in our option as a, an ALS provider, uh, but certainly the expectation and the standard of care is that we take at least two, if not three attempts, um, and ideally by one or two providers prior to going IO, uh, unless there's some reason we should go directly to an IO. All right. So, you know, things we want to look at is making sure there's no signs of infection, no breaks, no fractures, that we do have a good arm. And then as you come in and introduce yourself, hi, my name's Joe, I'm a paramedic. I'd like to start my V today, get you some fluids, try to get you feeling a little bit better. Is it okay if I start my V on you today? And right? allow the patient to say yes or no. And then ask the patient, have you ever had an IV before? Is there one arm that's better than the other? Is there any sites where they have trouble with? There's nothing more embarrassing than when the patient's like, yeah, they never get it over here, they always go over here, and you're like, oh, well, I'm a paragon, watch this. Um, and then you go over and you blow it, and then you get in them right in the area where they told you to. So listen to your patient, right? Listen to your patient. Um, they know their body and, and they've had this before. So if they know that there's an area where there's a struggle or they know where they're more successful, then start there, okay? Uh, remember that we can't do IVs on the side uh, if a patient has a fistula or a, a graft for a dialysis. Um, we, can, we shouldn't go on the side of a patient who has had a mastectomy with a lymphectomy, so we wouldn't want to go on that side there. So it's important to ask your patients, even for something that, you know, as kind of a routine for us as starting an IV, asking them, hey, is it okay if I start an IV on this side? Is there any reason I shouldn't use this arm? Or is there, you know, any, any place that's, you know, better for me to start this IV to be more successful, because ideally we want to do this in one attempt. We don't want to keep you know poking our patients over and over, so we want to make sure that we've done this correctly. All right. So now that we've kind of looked at the equipment that we've got out, uh, we'll kind of see in uh, you know our upcoming video how to put this all together as a station. All right. So we'll see you in the next one.